thanks all attendees for joining the OATG webinar. Uh, taking forward the presentation, uh, briefly introducing about who we are as a Nextinfo. So we as a Nextinfo are uh, headquartered in Southern California, Orange County, uh, provide consulting services, a blend of business process and software consulting services to help our customers to achieve operational excellence. We provide uh, software expertise or the product ERP expertise across Oracle ERP, SAP, Microsoft, Kinexus, NetSuite, and quite others. Uh, from the ERP domain standpoint, we provide business process expertise across ERP, EPM, HCM, CX, et cetera. Uh, we have got presence in Europe, uh, United States, and India, and we have been accredited by Gartner, Inc. 5000, and multiple agencies, along with we featured a uh, couple months before Yahoo Finance as providing services to both enterprise customers as well as the SME segment customers. Uh, moving to a brief introduction about panelists. Uh, I'm Hamil Parikh, uh, Senior Solution Architect from Nexinfo. Uh, expertise across business process, consulting, uh, change management, solution design, help customers across ERP, EPM, and HCM business processes, how they can adopt business uh, processes, what will be the transformation looking like for them to achieve that business excellence. I'm certified Oracle implementation specialist, uh, have presented multiple Oracle topics across uh, Ascend, Collaborate, the Earth World Collaborate, Yug, uh, and many of the regional OATG forums, and have published article in Oracle uh, OATG Insight Magazine. Uh, with me, I'm having Prakash, who is our EPM lead. Uh, would request Prakash to introduce himself. Over to you, Prakash. Indeed, pleasure welcoming you all to this web webinar. My name is Prakash Malmark, and I'm the EPM lead at Max Info. Um, I'm a speaker at Analytics and Data Summit happened in 2019 in Oracle Conference Center, California. I'm a certified uh, enterprise planning and budgeting cloud specialist. I'm also a certified uh, blockchain expert uh, by the Blockchain Council. My core area of works is primarily on the EPM and analytics. Back to you, Hema. Thank you, Prakash. A uh, brief overview of the agenda, what we're going to cover today is talking about the business challenges, uh, why Oracle EPM Cloud, what does the offering uh, EPM Cloud product from Oracle has got, what it takes for moving to uh, EPM Cloud, maybe you are on on-prem, Oracle application or non-Oracle application, what are the different approaches? What would be typical assessment looking like for you to adopt that? Uh, followed by customer case study, how customers have uh, leveraged EPM Cloud uh, for their success towards post that we'll be talking about the periodic maintenance. So if you are having EPM Cloud along with integrating with your ERP application, what are the periodic maintenance activities that needs to be performed and what would the typical checklist looking like? Towards the end, we'll be having a forum for Q&A. So please feel free to put your questions into the right side of the chat so that we can take those questions and we can address those. So with that, uh, getting into the presentation now, uh, talking about business challenges, uh, the challenges that impact the business confidence. Uh, if we try to think specifically from SP&A business user standpoint who perform the financial planning, uh, you may be using a spreadsheet or maybe your, your on-prem product or whatever product you may be using. So typical challenges that business have is like planning data looks skewed. What they see uh, on one side is probably X, whereas on the other side is Y, both are contradictory. So they're not really sure like this is what it should be. And then they had to do a deep dive analysis and try to refine it. Digit systems lacking modeling, uh, modeling capability. A lot of things are still manual, not able to leverage the automation of their forecasting or what if analysis, etc. Uh, sourcing from multiple systems is also painful because typically for you to perform your planning exercise effectively, you need to rely on the data being fed from multiple systems. It's not just the ERP system, but maybe there are a few other statistical data that you're trying to get from other systems. How you can effectively utilize that and make your planning more effective. Uh, system silos, uh, which are lacking visibility, so you have data source from multiple system, but you're not able to relate back or drill back and tie the things, how, what is showing up in your balances. That's another aspect that typically the business has got challenges. 
Others, what we have seen from uh, reports and tracking, maybe the current system or what users are using, it doesn't provide enough tracking visibility, uh, doesn't provide, because business typically requires multiple levels of reporting. Leadership would require management reporting, uh, a high level view of KPIs, whereas uh, accounting team would be requiring a detail level. They should be able to tie back, okay, what is showing up as a high level role of numbers? Is it really tying back to what the individual GL journal entry is? Can I track to that level? Is there a reporting capability? Can I do that? And last but not least, to cater to all these issues or to address this, many times they have to compromise on the financial controls. For coordination with multiple users, uh, things are being shared which can be left open for anybody to consume which is not required or which is not right. Those are the typical challenges that we have seen across many of our customers and the vision which most of the people would be expecting from the business standpoint would be, can I have a connected planning? Can my planning system talk? Am I having workforce planning? I'm having financial planning. I'm having CapEx planning. Can I have a connected view of that? Uh, can my system help me to utilize and create the models for my what if analysis? Does it, along with that, does it provide a flexibility where I change something and suddenly I get my balances changed in real time? Uh, can my systems also have an automated integration option? That way, it minimizes my manual interventions and it minimizes the error prone scenarios. And breaking the system silos, where I can actually see the balances at a high level and I can drill down or drill back to my uh, detailed expense transactions. Is it possible? Or, and can I get a robust reporting and dashboards to meet to everyone from accounting team to management or leadership level? Can a system help that? And in achieving all these things, the vision is that we are still not having any compliance issues. We have a, a SOC compliance, our security compliance, who is supposed to see what that has been mandated. And that's what this total presentation is about, how we can achieve that vision, or can EPM Cloud help in achieving that? So with that, moving to the next slide, or the section which is why Oracle EPM Cloud, and what does it offer? So if we try to see about Oracle EPM Cloud, the first thing question comes is, is a cloud offering of Oracle making sense, right? Why not to continue with on-prem, right? So if we start to think from that standpoint, the obvious reasons why the cloud adoption, which even the industry is moving around with is minimizing on hardware costs, your low cost of maintenance, uh, seamless monthly patching, you get your latest and greatest features being pushed to you as a part of the cloud ERP product, able to have your backups, multiple environments, and also a flexibility to customize or tailor or configure your applications to meet your uh, user-specific and your industry-specific advantage that you would like to gain. So with that, uh, moving to specifically what EPM Cloud has got the offering. So EPM Cloud offering provides caters to planning, financial consolidation close, account reconciliation, your master data management, which is called enterprise data management, EDMCS, uh, narrative reporting, which brings in your financial reporting along with the narration part, to have your quarterly or year-end report book to be generated, along with tax reporting and profitability cost management. For today's session, we'll be focusing more on the planning. Within the planning cloud, which is also called as EPBCS, or Enterprise Planning and Budgeting Cloud Service, it has got multiple sub-business processes. First being the financial, workforce, capital, uh, which is also called CapEx, and projects, and the strategic planning. So these are the different offerings what Oracle EPM Cloud provides, and we are going to do a deep dive as part of our discussion for the rest of the slides, more focused on the financial planning and how it actually can be utilized to connect with your workforce, capital projects, and what advantage it can bring in. So with that, moving to the next slide, we are talking about uh, the financial planning. Uh, Prakash, let's move to the next slide. If you can throw a bit of light on from the licensing standpoint, what would be the difference with standard license versus your enterprise license? Prakash, if you can throw the light for that offering from EPM, PBCS standpoint. Sure. As Hamel was mentioning, EPM is nothing but the Hyperion planning, what you have seen it in the on-prem, which now sits in the cloud with uh, 
bit more intelligence and then a lot more sophistication in, in the way how you can actually consume all these features in the cloud. Oracle actually packaged the EPM solutions uh, in uh, two editions. One is a standard edition, which includes the uh, typical planning process. Along with that, you also get the account reconciliation, consolidation and close process, and also a narrative report. Within planning, uh, in the standard edition, where you get all the out-of-the-box module, including capital, financials, workforce, project, or even your strategic modeling for long-range planning, right? And along with this, you'll also get a custom cube, uh, which is a custom database, which helps in uh, building some complex problem which you wanted to solve within the standard edition. On the other edition, uh, which Oracle calls it as the EPM Enterprise Cloud Services, uh, this is a full packaged uh, EPM suite, which includes a lot more business processes, including the EDMCS, uh, which is called as Enterprise Data Management Cloud Services. Uh, to primarily accommodate and uh, centralize all your metadata management and then you also get profitability and cost management and tax reporting in addition to narrative reports you also get the disclosure management feature in the enterprise box and within planning you get the custom planning and then the free form planning which typically helps in customers to build their own uh, custom business process to solve their uh, uh, special uh, challenges that they are facing in their planning process so custom planning includes uh, a complete uh, empty cubes where you can actually utilize those standard uh, dimension on along with that you can include all those custom dimensions which are going to be part of your planning life cycle on the other side you also get the free form planning which does not have any restriction like the custom planning which also means you don't really have to uh, utilize all those standard dimension instead you can build your dimension as as such you would like to have in the planning process across these uh, planning suite you get uh, two type of databases uh, a bso and then aso uh, bso is a, a block storage option which typically used for solving some complex scenarios whereas the aso is more like a data warehouse primarily for uh, reporting needs in the next few slides, we're going to uh, deep dive into the uh, key functionalities and features that it provides in, uh, in order to address those challenges. And then we also going to talk about some assessment on how you can actually move forward uh, to the cloud. Let's start with the first uh, key challenge of uh, connected planning. As a FPNDA team, uh, uh, any team would be like interested in uh, knowing what data comes from which part, uh, phase of my planning process. So in, across the planning, let's say you, uh, you are more focused on the financials, workforce capex and uh, projects, right? You have the uh, workforce planning module, which sends the aggregated uh, compensation by employee or job code, or even by both employee and job code back all the way to the financials module. And then talking about the capex, uh, where the amortization and depreciation of uh, each of those assets is going to be categorized into your financial accounts, uh, into balance sheet and then income statement account. And talking about projects, how can I actually manage my projects? Uh, how, how can I actually plan my projects? Assuming I have a capital project, which I wanted to plan, consider how much of uh, capital that I want to spend, uh, the expense that I wanted to spend for my capital project. And uh, end of the day, once the uh, project is done, you can actually capitalize it and uh, it will be moved into the capital planning as an uh, existing asset. And again, the existing asset uh, in, in integrates directly all the way to the financials. And within financials, you get the uh, typical income statement, which again, be broken down into revenue and then expense planning and balance sheet planning, cash flow planning. You also get the strategic modeling, uh, which allows you to plan your uh, corporate uh, visions for the next five to 10 years. Out of the box, within all of these pre-built modules, which includes drivers, trends, and then even you can use the trends in accounts, which means you can bring your own chart of accounts and then use those trends on top of those. And it also gets you gives you a KPIs, calculation forms, reports, the dashboard, and then some quick infolets. And out of the box, end of the day, this provides a best-in-class uh, uh, business planning process, which is uh, packaged along with this planning modules. Talking about the modeling capabilities that uh, typically FP&A team or an analyst who plays a uh, lot with these uh, system when, uh, whenever a planning cycle is getting initiated, right? So that's when uh, assuming that you are almost close to uh, finalize your budget and uh, you suddenly wanted to uh, 
have a scenario hey well, i wanted to understand in case if i have a different scenario how would my numbers may look like let's say you wanted to change a trend from current year actual average to last year uh, uh, forecast average right so how would those number will affect uh, my current finalized number right that's where uh, without even disturbing your uh, real number which you are about to uh, publish it to the uh, management you can quickly create some what if kind of scenarios to understand based on the new trend that i've picked uh, how my numbers are going to look like and then if you like it right so that's where uh, you have your sandbox feature which typically creates a local database of uh, mimics the overall uh, application in a local place uh, which which is accessible only by a user who created the sandbox and then they can play with the balances and then they can publish it before even they publish it they can send it to an approval process hierarchy and then uh, based on the superior or the controller who is going to review the number they he or she can actually approve whether they wanted to uh, release it to the publishing version or still they wanted to hold it back additionally what the other feature that any user will be looking for is how dynamically can i change my rolling forecast cycle assuming i have a 12 month rolling fire cycle and suddenly i wanted to uh, change it to 16 or even up to 60 months right so can i change it on a dynamic basis without even uh, having a developer to work on uh, uh, changing those or introducing a lot more uh, objects so that's not the case in the out of the box planning module you get a small drop down list from there you can actually pick how many rolling periods you wanted to use for your rolling forecast cycle and within the forecasting cycle, uh, you also get a lot of predictive algorithms within the system, including non-seasonal or seasonal or even ARIMA time series kind of algorithms to typically uh, predict the numbers. So you don't really have to work on uh, uh, defining or deriving those numbers on a periodic basis. You, you can let these predictive algorithms to predict those numbers and based on its prediction, you can go and uh, modify in case if it, if it requires a revision. Let's talk about the integration, uh, which may be a kind of a, a keen interest for a lot of uh, developers or even uh, people who wanted to uh, integrate all their system within their ecosystem to talk to the EPM system or ideally to uh, use it in the planning cycle. Right? This is a high level architecture of how the planning system will look like with uh, uh, we have taken some minimalistic uh, data sources here. Uh, on the uh, leftmost corner, we have the financials uh, cloud, which uh, sends the kind of an accounting system, which sends the GL actuals uh, to the EPM planning cloud. Ideally, we'll be utilizing all those actuals for to derive uh, planning numbers, uh, or even you will be utilizing it on the rolling forecast where you may have nine plus three or nine three plus nine kind of rolling uh, forecast. Or even if you have flat files or even you have an on-prem system which can also be connected to the EPM cloud utilizing the EPM agent or the EPM automate utility. And on the rightmost end, uh, uh, we have just quickly highlighted the different user interfaces through which you can actually access your data from the EPM cloud uh, through a web browser or an office plugin which sits on your office suite. Or even you can build some financial reports let's speak into the details of the integration services that oracle epm provides it has got pre-built adapters including fusion cloud or hcm cloud netsuite which all ask uh, it, it gives a pre-built adapter that connects uh, all the way directly to those services from your epm planning cloud fusion uh, will typically sending the gl uh, actuals to the epm planning application in return it picks the budget data which is actually originated within your planning system right so it picks the budget data and again you can decide whether you wanted to use those budget data just for reporting needs or uh, you wanted to use those for setting up some soft limit on the budget controls right? assuming that you have a flat file or uh, will i be able to upload those uh, flat files all the way directly into the apm cloud yes you can upload flat files directly into apm cloud or even if you wanted to automate this process you can utilize the epm automate services to uh, pick the file and then uh, uh, push it into the EPM or again in sequence you can also run some uh, process which you may typically want to do after you load some trust data into the system. It also has the ability to connect to PeopleSoft, uh, JD. 
you might be wondering in case if I have a different uh, legacy system or an you know, on-prem application where my database is uh, available, will I still be able to send these data from my on-prem system or a third-party system to EPM Cloud? The answer is yes. You have the EPM agent, uh, which is also packaged with the EPM Cloud. Uh, along with this, you also get the REST APIs, uh, which can also connect to your source system directly, assuming you your source system has got those REST API services. Right, or even you can establish a direct connection uh, to your DB using the EPM agent. End of the day, the outbound that you may be uh, expecting from the EPM planning suite is where uh, it has the ability to talk to OAC, narrate your reports, FCCS, or even if you need a flat file, you can still be able to do that. So, uh, Prakash, like uh, this EPM automated EPM agent has the two different tools being available and uh, can cater to integration of EPM Cloud with the flat file uh, or the third-party database. Uh, what is the rec uh, recommended usage? Uh, and if you can throw, throw some light on the technical aspect, like what's the best case when what should be used, EPM Automate or EPM Agent? Sure. Let's talk about the EPM uh, Automate uh, utility. It's also uh, packaged with the EPM planning suite. So, uh, Whenever you have an EPM Automate, you can uh, deploy that on a local server or even if you wanted to deploy it on a cloud infrastructure where you wanted to set up a compute instance or an elastic instance, you can deploy the EPM Automate. EPM Automate has the ability to pick any flat file from the local server and it, uh, it can upload it to the EPM system. In return, it also has the ability to uh, extract the data from the EPM planning suite and then it it can send it all the way back to the uh, same server, uh, which can again be consumed by other softwares for any reporting or additional needs. Comparing this uh, to a EPM agent, EPM agent has the ability to talk to a database directly. Uh, it's not just like an EPM automate uh, just to pick the data from a file. EPM agent can connect to a database and it has the capability to uh, run some SQLs on top of the database. Uh, and the result set from the database will be again uh, received by the EPM agent, which again be uh, pushed to the planning and budgeting cloud. And in return, if you wanted to write back some budget data, you still be able to do that. And uh, even if you wanted to drill back all the way uh, to your source system, assuming you have some digital uh, services in your uh, source system, you should be able to do that as well. So this is a quick view of how the data integration uh, user interface will look like. Although there are two different interfaces uh, from where you can actually develop all these, but uh, uh, for ease of use, uh, once those integrations are developed with the data integration screen, you can actually uh, pick and choose which integration you wanna run. And uh, you can hit the play button, the run icon, and it will ask to, for which period you want to run the data for. And that's that simple it is to execute an integration. Or even you can actually automate these process using a lot of other scheduling functionalities. Let's talk about how you can actually integrate uh, EPM system to a fusion budget control uh, system, uh, which again, a uh, lot of places have uh, seen uh, customers using those budget data for reporting and uh, a few customers will be wondering, hey, can I use this budget data for to set up some soft control whenever someone creates a PO or, in, uh, or even in the fixed assets uh, PPM module. So this is how you will have to be uh, setting up the connection. You have to set up the source connection and make sure uh, the budget control uh, checkbox is enabled when you are creating the connection. Right? That's the key parameter which identifies uh, to which particular queue in the source system the EPM has to shake the hand with. And the following steps are uh, um, pretty much the common steps where you have to establish a target application and then make sure the period mapping is all defined and then the scenarios, uh, which we call it as a category mapping within the system, the scenario in my EPM, and it has to be mapped to what scenario in my source system. An input format is a place where uh, typically we will be defining how the dimensions between uh, both these book system are mapped. And then we create a location then, which typically to segregate the rules and with some filter criteria. And then we create data load rules and mappings where we say, hey, this is the uh, dimension uh, account which maps to the uh, account segment in my source system. However, in my EPM system, I have prefixed my account dimension with uh, capital A. You can define those uh, mappings in this integration UI. 
one of the key considerations uh, that we want to pay emphasize here in this uh, session is uh, whenever you are creating a integration to your uh, fusion cloud system assuming you have a custom planning application in your epm planning suite uh, which typically means you have to set up the argument as hyperion planning uh, again it can be connected either to a reporting gl cube or a budget control budgetary control cube on the other side in case if you have a out of the box planning module right in such cases that data load jobs has to be defined with an argument saying it is epm financial module let's uh, uh Hemel, would you like to talk about uh how the EPM systems breaks the system silos? Sure. So I think uh, the breaking system silos, I think that's one of the critical aspects where uh, you would like to have the system talking with your source system. So moving to the next slide, uh, a peculiar representation of your drill through the source system, as you can see, I've got a rent expense of 17,420 what does it comprise of what are those transactions can i get uh drill through to the those individual transactions of the payables invoice yes and that's what uh if you talk an example of epm cloud like what you can see a snapshot is of uh, from epm cloud you're doing a drill through to your oracle fusion financial application uh another aspect is like you can utilize your drill down based on your hierarchy which can see your total balance being broken up into multiple child account level balances but the drill through together will ensure that whatever the source system it is fusion financials or it is other products at least you can go drill through to those transactions which have been loaded or been brought into your epm cloud and that provides a confidence to the business that the number that i'm seeing total i have got a justification for it uh one of the key aspects to achieve this is utilization of the plan element dimension that we have seen. Uh, Prakash, why don't you throw some light on how that can be used to achieve this functionality? Definitely. End of the day, when you are done with all your adjustments that you wanted to make as part of your planning process, and now the question is, hey, how can I actually go and audit uh, what was generated by the system and what was actually the adjustment gone into, the, in, into those GL strings? So that's where the plan element dimensions uh, plays a vital role in differentiating whether the number was actually calculated by the system or was that an adjustment uh, made by an user. Again, if an audit is enabled at the data level, you'll be able to go back and then identify uh, who was the user who actually made that adjustment uh, in those combinations. Another way where the plan element helps in differentiating whether a data was loaded directly from the source system that's where we have a load dimension member uh, which helps in uh, uh, saying hey, this data was loaded all the way from the source system and if the drill through is established in the connectivity you will be able to perform a drill through by simply doing a right click on the balance that you see in the screen and then perform the drill through which will take you all the way back to the source system and differentiate what were the journals that made to those total balance and in case if you have some direct inputs in Assuming you have uh, other planning process with processes within your planning suite and you wanted to identify uh, whether the data is flowing from a workforce or even uh, capex or projects, right? So plan element typically helps in uh, differentiating those data elements. Let's talk about uh, how the reporting and dashboard uh, capabilities are uh, so EPM Planning Cloud offers a lot of uh, reporting capabilities where you have the Smart U for Office, which can be plugged in top of uh, the Office suite, which helps in uh, connecting to your uh, cloud planning application, and you can pull your numbers in the Excel interface, which is much more uh, sophisticated and to which we are more familiar with, and where you can also use those macros or even those Excel functionalities to uh, build some cool looking uh, da dashboards and reports. And you also get the pixel perfect uh, kind of reporting studio helps in uh, uh, creating some management style reports using those FR studios. And you also get those out of the box infolets dashboards in case if you offer an uh, out of the box planning module or even if you wanted to have a custom planning module still, you will be able to define and uh, develop these dashboards which will give you a quick insight uh, to your data. 
This is one another key thing that uh, uh, any administrator will be worried about, uh, so security and controls. EPM provides uh, layers of securities. So let's start with the topmost layer where it provides a role-based access. Right, so you can define when an user enters an instance, you, you can define what role uh, with which they can actually enter the system. A service administrator being at the top and then the viewer role at uh, the bottom most in the layer. And if you wanted to segregate the uh, level of roles and responsibilities within the application, like at the object level, or maybe user one who wanted to have access only to financial statements, maybe other user should be assigned only to a different module within the planning system, which is also possible within the EPM plan. And you, you wish to do some data level restriction, and that's where the dimension level segregation comes in, where you can say user one can view the compensation by all employees, whereas the other user can see only the aggregated total employee level detail, but not at individual employee level compensations. Let's move to one another interesting topic uh, to understand how you can actually uh, move forward uh, to the cloud. So there are multiple ways in which you can uh, move to cloud. So one of the uh, easiest thing is the lift and shift of your on-prem application all the way to your cloud infrastructure. Again, you can deploy your on-prem Hyperion planning application in a different cloud infrastructure or even within Oracle uh, cloud infrastructure. Technically, your application is now in the cloud. Uh, uh, however, uh, the application that you are going to access from the cloud is still the older version or the on-prem version, uh, which we know Oracle uh, support will not be there uh, post-2030. Uh, and uh, this is where uh, you'll also not get all those latest features that you typically see it in the EPM planning cloud environment. Another way to move is uh, assuming you, you don't want to move your application as such to your to a cloud infrastructure. Instead, you just wanted to move your planning application plus data to the new EPM cloud. So that's where the LCM snapshot process helps in uh, the traditional way of exporting and migrating your uh, data from production to different uh, environments within your on-prem environment. Right? The, the traditional LCM snapshot will also help in uh, migrating your application data to your cloud uh, in bits and pieces where you'll have to set up a custom application in the uh, one of the parts uh, that you've been subscribed to in the cloud and uh, import your snapshot and make sure all the application is all working good. Let's uh, take an example where you may be having uh, more than one application in your uh, on-prem world uh, which you wanted to migrate it to EPM planning suite. So that's where you may have to provision two different parts and uh, move each application to one of those parts. Here is a quick assessment to identify uh, which route would be a best option uh, uh, moving forward towards the cloud. In You have an uh, on-prem application. The first question we may be having is whether your on-prem application is an architect application. If, if it is an EPMA application, so now the question is, uh, you don't have an exact uh, replication or you cannot move that uh, application as such into the cloud. So that's where we have a basic question. Do you want it to use a pre-built or the out-of-the-box modules in the cloud, uh, right? In case if your answer is yes, you can pick and choose which module you want it to enable and then you can configure, build the integration and then your planning cloud is live there. Uh, assuming you don't want it to use those out-of-the-box planning, instead you want it to build your own custom process in, in the cloud, then you can go ahead and have an enterprise edition, build your custom application, identify the key pain point that you wanted to address in the cloud suite, and then build the solution and EPM planning is live in the cloud. In, if in case you, you don't have an EPM main in their on-prem and instead you have a custom app, again, the question is, do you want to consider redesigning your current process that you've been using in the on-prem? If the answer is yes, you can go back to predefined modules, all those questions. If the answer is no, the tra traditional uh, LCM export and import process would uh, work uh, better, which we have highlighted in, uh, in our previous slide. Uh, Hamil, uh, would you like to uh, talk about our customer success stories? Sure. So um, we are talking, we're going to cover two different uh, case studies where a customer had EPM Cloud as well as uh, Fusion ERP. And one of the customer opted for a big bang or a kind of a one go live approach, whereas another customer opted for a staggered approach. 
uh, would like to get into the first one, which is the healthcare service provider, where it was a uh, complete suite uh, for the core finance and EPM going live together. Customer was having a legacy application on Microsoft Dynamics uh, for the ERP and the budgeting system as Exim, and the data warehouse as a key stats application with a third party tool called Chat Reporting, as well as manual reporting tools, which is Excel based, used for the financial reporting. Uh, after the adoption of Oracle Cloud, uh, they moved from like 18 legal entities to like 30 plus legal entities and 550 plus locations or the campus locations, if I may have to say, uh, and utilizing EPM Cloud planning budgeting service for both the budgeting process as well as the reporting, uh, financial reporting aspect. Uh, the data was sourced from three plus uh, systems for their uh, statistical data as well as the budgeting calculation. Uh, in the next slide, we're going to talk about what was the process built up to derive the budget specifically for the healthcare industry business need and how it was utilized along, along with the statistical data. So we would like to hand it over to Prakash to throw some light on how the design was been done, specifically catered to the healthcare industry. Thanks, Emma. So for this customer, uh, uh, they have multiple uh, data sources uh, which sends data on a more frequent basis. So one, one system which sends uh, statistical information on a daily basis, which again has to be utilized in the EPM uh, through which we arrive the uh, start suggested budget numbers. And then we also get the monthly statistical information from the same system and we also have another system which provides monthly budgeted uh, stats data. And we also have the financials cloud uh, which sends the GL actuals on an hourly basis. And in EPM where we have uh, built some crosswalk mappings uh, to say how the GL accounts are mapped uh, all the way with the stats accounts. And there are a lot of cases where a single GL account will be mapped with multiple statistical account. And uh, based on this crosswalk mapping, uh, the rule was defined in a way to solve the problem of uh, uh, deriving the statistical adjusted number. So the budget number, what's getting originated on the EPM uh, system is again being adjusted by the stats entry. So we utilize these uh, data again uh, in, the, in the Fusion Cloud to typically uh, uh, to apply a soft limit whenever a purchase order getting created or requesters creates a PO, this stats adjusted number goes in as a advisory data in the Fusion Cloud. Along with this, we also send the uh, budget all the way to the financial system for tracking purpose and some reporting needs where we have built some dashboard that uh, says a year over year change and then how the uh, patients per day were actually calculated based on the statistical information. We also send the uh, outbounds uh, to a local server, which again been cons consumed by a different system uh, for different reporting needs. Back to you, Hema. Uh, yeah, so the other use case or the customer case study is for energy and utility provider. Uh, and for that customer, uh, it is multi-year staggered uh, adoption approach which customer had adopted uh, starting from 2017 where they uh, adopted core finance ERP on Oracle Fusion Cloud and took the subsequent couple years to stabilize and adopt uh, supply chain modules followed by in 2021 which is last year they embarked on EPM journey so for EPM the modules that were in scope for like close manager of FCCS Enterprise Data Management Cloud, uh, EDMCS, Financial Planning, uh, Narrative Reporting, and Workforce Planning. Uh, plan for five months duration, and subsequently, in the current 2022, which is ongoing, is the project planning, CapEx planning, and some enhancement to the reports. Uh, one of the good aspects is integrating this EPM with other ERP application and within EPM, so many modules talking with each other. And that is one of the key aspect, which is talking about a connected application. And uh, Prakash would like you to throw some light from technically how systems and the modules were connected as a part of the integrated business process. Definitely. So one uh, key differentiation between this customer and then the earlier customer is where uh, the other customer uh, was using a custom planning application of com completely a customized solution. Whereas the, for this customer, it's all uh, out of the box planning suite, what we have uh, 
uh, enabled and then configure a doc for this customer. So within the EPM uh, portfolio where we have EDMCS uh, primarily to control all those metadata. So whenever someone wanted to create a value in a, in a value set or even if they wanted to alter the hierarchy version, right? this is all controlled uh, by the EDMCS system upon uh, uh, making changes in the EDMCS, it goes for an approval and upon the approval, it gets published uh, to all these spoke system which are connected uh, or plugged into the EDMCS console. So this is where the Fusion Financial and then APM are the spoke system connected to the EDMCS. And on the other side, right, where we have the financial which is also connected to the planning and which sends a GL actual on every 10 minutes basis, in return it takes back the budget data on on demand basis. We also have the narrative report uh, component which is connected back to the planning suite where we have the uh, uh, dollar numbers as well as the statistical information uh, which are blended and matched up to, uh, to uh, bring some disclosure management kind of documents, uh, a monthly review report and then quarterly review report. Each of those are close to 20 and uh, 40 pages documents. Let's speak into what we have uh, configured in the planning cloud within the planning. Uh, we have configured uh, financials, uh, which is again broken, uh, broken down into income statement or revenue expense and then balance sheet and cash flow. Uh, we also have the workforce planning to uh, plan the compensation and then secondary queue for uh, holding all those assumptions to benefits and then additional earnings, uh, which are all uh, connected back to the financials. And financial is again tied back to the custom planning cube, which we use it for the reporting that's connected to the narrative reports. In future, we are working on uh, uh, bringing up the uh, projects and then capital live, uh, which are ideally going to send the aggregated expenses from by projects, uh, uh, I mean, together as a project into the financial and depreciation amortization, which also goes into the financial statements. Let's talk about the periodic maintenance uh, that we'll have to uh, keep in consideration as part of the EPM system live uh, process, right? So we typically establish a budget process task list to differentiate and then the uh, key tasks that each of an user has to do or perform on a periodic basis as an administrator uh, uh, who is supposed to generate the baseline budget and then the FPNDA team analyst and controller uh, can uh, look into those balances and make some adjustments. Uh, again, the adjustment is can be done by using a lot of functionalities and features that are available within the system. And for this, you don't really need to have a third uh, a party system or a different tool to make sure you are uh, you, you are actually following through the steps in sequence. Within planning, you can utilize the task list to perform this. And uh, the instance maintenance, uh, how you want to maintain the system on a daily basis, or uh, whether you want to take a backup of your application, whether you want to download and keep those last 30 day backup, again, uh, you can automate this process as well. And as part of the monthly patching where Oracle publishes what's new that goes into each of these business processes, right? So uh, that's something that we'll have to keep in mind that we have to check those on, on a periodic basis. As a best practice recommendation, we recommend our customers not to enable the uh, data level audit where there are more frequent data getting loaded into the system and huge volume of data goes in. Right? This I uh, typically be consuming a lot more database size and uh, uh, which may also reduce the performance of the system. And then we recommend people to use uh, security layer as efficient as and uh, we, we build some matrix to primarily inherit groups instead of creating multiple groups. We recommend people to create uh, from the bottom top uh, approach. And then wherever possible, we always automate all the process uh, processes uh, using the EPM utility or the utility which has been plugged in or deployed in any of the local servers, right? And then we again use these utilities to send some periodic failure messages or the status messages to make sure where exactly you're running into uh, challenges uh, to easily identify and make sure that this is not getting happening again and again. And then workflows uh, primarily to delegate your uh, work in, in your absence, make sure uh, the system uh, or somebody is not depending and waiting on you, right? So that, that's where the work, workflow delegation is something that we always recommend. And to talk specifically on the year end and then month end, uh, uh, 
that's where you'll have to make sure you add the adjustment period into the data management mappings to make sure uh, there is no break free and uh, break, breaking happening in the system in terms of the data not getting matched up between the source system and then your planning uh, suite and then also make sure whenever you are introducing a new fiscal year in your uh, erp system uh, make sure the budget periods are opened up uh, uh, that's plays a vital role when you push back these budget entries from your epm suite to your financial system and also the other key thing to uh, consider is the uh, synchronization of your metadata between all the spoke system assuming you may have multiple system so the easiest ways to do the and make sure that there is no break here is by utilizing and uh, the edm cs application to talk to all these uh, connected system and then uh, making sure the variables appropriately getting upgraded on, on a, a more frequent basis where you wanted to make sure there is no anything is missing in the periodic checklist whenever you have a, a data budget data goes into reporting cube uh, make sure the scenario is being defined in your uh, uh, erp system in case if you have a fusion system make sure to run the create generalized balances cube process in in case you have a budget control system uh, where you wanted to send the budget for the advisory controller tracking budget that's where you have to make sure uh, budget is created budget control is created in, in if not uh, create it and then run the budgetary control balances queue process to make sure this is all uh, ready to pick the data would like uh, Hemul to uh, uh, quickly summarize uh, what we have covered in the last uh, 45 to 50 minutes Hemul. Uh, thank you prakash so just a quick recap of the we talked about different challenges that business is facing and to for the business to gain a confidence of a system which can meet the business need is essentially requires a connected planning system which can give a unified view of their financial aspect, their operational planning aspect, as well as their line of business planning if they're doing it, along with your workforce, capex, all built in that. Uh, second aspect critical is the planning system should be flexible, should have that automation capability for their modeling uh, flexibility, along with uh, what if for predictive analysis. And if system uh, can be integrated to have an integrated solution from the source system to an EPM uh, capable system, that would be the best along with the tools which can automate those data movement between the systems. Along with that, ability to have uh, effective drill down and drill through capability, which can ensure to break down system silos and an end-to-end -end transactional visibility or the balance visibility that accounting team can get. And that's what's going to be key to build the confidence for the business users. Along with the reporting tools, which Prakash had showcased and talked about, is going to actually help also from their auditing standpoint and as well as from the financial reporting standpoint. And last but not least, their role-based access control and the multiple level of security, even at a dimension level, what Oracle EPM build, brings, and that is going to be of great and immense help to the business. So with that, we are coming to the completion of our presentation. Uh, we would like to open a forum for Q&A, but before we uh, go there, uh, quickly a reminder, you can always put your questions into the chat window, and we are having a special offer for all the attendees who have joined us to provide a two-hour uh, complimentary introductory training. The topics can be uh, EPM planning product demo, or it can be a report, reporting tools walkthrough, or an integration tools walkthrough. So you can always leverage that. And if you are interested in any of these topics, feel free to reach out to Melody Benabu or Doug Atmon uh, before 28th of Feb, 2022. Uh, the email address are provided here. So with that, we would like to open for Q&A forum. Over to you, Maria. Thank you so much, you guys. Um, Hamal and Prakash, if you guys could put your names back up on the screen, our audience was actually asking to get your speaker information. Even that first slide would be perfect. Um, thank you so much. That was a really great and informative presentation. And um, as they just mentioned, if you guys would take a moment to type your questions into the chat, I'll go ahead and paste them for everyone to see and to hear. 
while we wait for those questions to come in, I'll give you all a little bit longer. I understand it takes a moment to type this in. Um, remember, we do have a send coming up in June. So I'm going to go ahead and put the link for that into the chat so you can take a look. There we go. All right. I do have a question. What's the typical timeline for Oracle EPM planning implementation? Uh, so uh, a good question. So typically Oracle EPM cloud planning implementation, uh, again, depends on two aspects. It's just a financial planning, uh, which is one of the key product offering that can range anywhere from six weeks to uh, 12 weeks, depending on how many source systems it needs to integrate with. But if you're looking out for uh, multiple sub processes, including workforce planning, projects and capex planning, the timeline would be longer. So one of the key aspects uh, for implementation is what are the source systems and what is your ERP system to which it needs to integrate. If it's an uh, Oracle ERP cloud or the finance cloud, uh, it has got inbuilt integration uh, real time, so that will be a much faster. Great. All right, and I appreciate you guys putting your information up on the screen. So if anyone thinks of any questions later, they have um, information to follow up. And don't forget, we do have our member directory. You could always search their names. That's why I went ahead and put our speaker info into the chat so you can reach out to them through that as well. So we will be sure to post this great recording onto our knowledge base. Um, that should be up within 24 hours. So I wanna say thank you again to our presenters. Oh, looks like we have a question that did just pop up. Let's make sure we address this before closing out today. Yes, um, someone was asking about the slides. The slides will be included in the knowledge base as well with the recording. So you will have access to those. All right, good question. Well, thanks again, everyone, for attending today's webinar. That does conclude our session. Everyone have a wonderful rest of your day.